Just look at the state of this cow's foot. It's layer upon layer upon layer of detached hoof horn, and that is a problem we are about to fix. This is the Hoof GP. So look at this, we have layer upon layer upon layer of hoof horn that is completely detached. You can see the far away claw is much higher than this inside one. So it means there's too much weight on that outer or lateral claw. And that is definitely also something we can do something about. So let's do that. We're gonna remove all of these layers one by one until we can get rid of all of this detached hoof horn. And hopefully there's nothing major lurking underneath. That's layer number one gone, now for layer number two. Close your eyes, get out of your skin. Oh, it is my life, let it in. If I could, I would be right here with you. Now you may wonder why I don't just go straight in for the kill and remove all three layers in one go. Well, I don't really know what's happening underneath these layers of hoof horn. And by removing layer one and two, I can take my time to remove layer number three, which is the most delicate of all. Using this spray will clean away all of the dirt and debris so that I can see if there's any open lesions that I can easily avoid. And now we can clearly see there's a hole starting to emerge right in the heel of our sole. Those moos you can hear in the background, by the way, are not from the cow in the crush. They're from the cows in the shed beside where we're trimming. These layers of hoof horn are never the same. They don't always extend over the entirety of the hoof. They don't always end halfway up. That's why I need to take my time. They're never uniform, so we never know quite where they're going to fade away to nothing and where they're going to continue going up or down the hoof. That's why sometimes it may seem like I'm taking a long time, but it's vital to take your time in these situations because like I said, you never truly know how far you're going to need to go. The source of the problem is beginning to emerge. This cow has had some sort of problem here, high up on the white line, in the heel of this lateral or outside claw. You can see there's digital dermatitis affecting the lesion. If we'd left it as it was, dirt would just have stayed around the problem and caused an even bigger issue for this cow. So removing these layers of hoof horn slowly as we've done has been absolutely vital in this cow's continued healthcare. This is when you need nice, fresh, razor sharp bovibond knives to do delicate little things like this. It really helps. In fact, it makes it possible.
Bully Bond business. And a Bully Bond block. These are awesome. So this looked like a fairly dramatic hoof before we started. And that's pretty much because it was. There were layer upon layer of hoof horn. And now we've removed it, we've added a block to that inner claw, and now that big discrepancy between the heights, i.e. the height difference between the outside claw and the inside claw, has been fixed, it's been rectified. We've overcome it by using a Bovey Bond block and getting the weight completely off this white line lesion. However, this lesion does have some dermatitis on it, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it with salic, that salic, salic, however you say salicylic acid, I don't know. You see, there's dermatitis here. That's why it looks kind of granulated. And that'll prevent this lesion from healing if we don't kill the dermatitis. I've said it before and I'll say it again and probably again and again and again and again and again. When you're baking a cake, if somebody was trying to eat it, you'd never be able to finish the cake, would you? Because somebody was eating it. Well, that's exactly how dermatitis works. The hoof can't regrow properly or to its fullest extent because the dermatitis is eating it as it's being grown. It'll be good when the favorite brother-in-law starts, won't it, Greg? Yeah, then I can leave. What? You know I'd never leave you, buddy. You'd be lost without me. He might not leave through choice. Go. All joking aside, I tell people all the time, like in real life, not in the world of YouTube, that it's awesome working together with me and Craig. We're different in lots of ways, which is really good because he kind of calms me down or chills me out, reminds me of everything I forget and I kind of spur him on because sometimes he's a little bit too cautious. And I don't actually mean with hoof trimming, I mean maybe with getting a crush in somewhere or sharp, sharpening a knife properly or fixing something or whatever. It works well, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I wouldn't know half the stuff. In fact, I wouldn't know any of the stuff I know now without the help of Graham. He's a great brother-in-law. It's difficult. Sometimes you have to say, Craig, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Otherwise, he just doesn't know. I knew you were going to pick up on that. Rock hard. And that's hard done along with this video. Thanks for watching guys, this has been the Hoof GP and you have been the herd. Cheers! Catch you later. Catch you later guys!